Now, before this night, the coven had attempted several times to try to break this hex that Lindsay had cast. And the coven believed initially this hex was actually cast directly at Irenia because Irenia was suffering from things like depression and anxiety and not finding love. And so of course that had to be a product of this curse. And as the coven had continued to try and fail at breaking this hex, the hex had only become more powerful and begun to spread from Irenia to other witches in this coven who actually were not present this particular night, including a 20 year old woman who began complaining of depression and ever worsening headaches, which of course had to be because of this hex. And so that was why on this night, the coven had decided to really beef up their attack on this hex. And so that was why Rick had gone out and brought in David, the experienced warlock from St. Louis, Missouri, who claimed he had broken a hex before and he could do it again for them. As Rick, Irenia, and Dave all sat in the circle, they looked at each other and then they began chanting in unison to bring out the dead, to join them in the living room right now. And as they began this chant, Rick found himself intensely staring at those two candles with Lindsay and Baby on them. And as he stared at the flames dancing across the top of them, Rick started to feel like he was kind of drifting off into a trance-like state. And he knew that based on his prior teachings from Irenia, the leader of this coven, that this must be what it feels like when the spirit world opens up, which means the dead really were coming into the room. And then as Rick is kind of dealing with this trance-like state, he heard Irenia begin to talk, but it wasn't her normal voice. It was the slow and deep sounding voice, almost like something had inhabited her body and taken it over and was now speaking through her mouth. And Irenia, in this kind of slow and strange voice, she would tell Rick and David that the curse is still growing. And then she would say something that totally caught Rick by surprise. She said again in that slow, strange voice that the hex now was also on Rick and his entire family. And if they didn't break this hex immediately, Rick and his family would all perish. Rick heard this, you know, he's still in this trance-like state, but his heart began racing because he didn't know this hex could potentially affect his loved ones. And so this was a really big deal. They needed to end this hex tonight. Rick listened intently as Irenia began to say in this strange voice what their plan was for that night to break this hex. Basically, Rick and David were going to perform a sacred ritual. And Irenia, she began to say to the spirits in the room that Rick and David, they were ready, but they needed help. And so after she said this, she went quiet and so too did Rick and David. And they're all just sitting there kind of waiting for something to happen. And then after about a minute of just total silence, Irenia began to speak again, still in this strange, slow, bizarre voice, but Rick and David knew now it was a different voice coming out of her. Now Irenia was speaking on behalf of the spirit world that was in the room with them. And Irenia, she would say in this voice, I grant you five demons to help you on your quest to break this hex. And then after saying this, Irenia, she opened her eyes and she looked kind of confused for a moment. And then she kind of got her bearings and she looked at David and Rick and she told them now in her normal voice that they had to perform this sacred ritual before the two candles in the middle with Lindsay and baby etched on them burned out. And so basically Rick and David, they needed to get this done tonight. Then Irenia handed David a sacred tool that would be used that night in this sacred ritual that David and Rick were going to complete. And then Rick and David, they would stand up to leave. And before they left, Irenia would give them the typical witch send off, which was blessed be. And then Rick and David, they nodded their heads. They turned and walked out of the apartment. And as soon as they were out into the night, Rick could have sworn he saw dark shadows moving around all over the place. And he knew right then and there that he and David would be safe that night because clearly the shadows moving around had to be those five demons that Irenia had called forth from the spirit world to protect them this night. And so feeling very safe and empowered, Rick and David went straight into Rick's car. Rick turned it on and pulled away from the curb and began heading towards their destination.
The other day, old Seagull Lung was looking pretty down, and so naturally, I offered him some of my iced wildebeest retinas to suck on, but he just shook his head and said, Dad, thank you, but what I really need right now is, you know, a bloodthirsty horde of zombies to descend on this town so I can savagely destroy them with various DIY weaponry, but alas, zombies aren't real, and so my dream will never come true. And at this point, I just slapped Lung right across the face. And I said, Lung, are you kidding me? You ever heard of a little thing called DLS? Doomsday Last Survivor? Are you kidding me? They literally have trillions of zombies you can slaughter right now. Are you kidding me? Come here, come here. Let me explain to you what this is. In Doomsday, you enter a dark, post-apocalyptic world filled with your beloved bloodthirsty zombies. And it's up to you to strategize and survive their wrath. You can customize shelters and you can even recruit heroes with their own special special abilities that will help you slaughter all these zombies. And right now, you have a chance at some of the $5,000 cash that's up for grabs for playing this game. You can be a lone survivor, or you can join forces with other players and alliances to try to withstand the zombie invasion. Heck, if you get lucky, you might even be able to join me and old Seek Out Long's Alliance. And for a limited time only, you can earn a special rare name tag that shows off your part of the Ballin Squad when you download the game using my link. And remember, there's $5,000 cash up for grabs right now. To potentially win some of that money, click the link in the description below, download the game, and then in the page, you'll see there's something called a might ranking, and the top three people in that ranking walk away with up to $1,000 each. Outside of that ranking, many other players will be chosen for cash prizes, some up to $100 each. Hurry and download Doomsday right now so you can join the limited time events and earn the legendary hero Jaden. The next zombie wave arrives in eight hours, so come and join me and I'll see you long now. A few miles away, at the house where the 16-year-old evil witch, Lindsay Cassinger, lived, a 20-year-old army private named Joshua Bennett was sitting at the kitchen table in Lindsay's house, eating chicken wings and just kind of enjoying his night. Josh didn't know Lindsay very well, but he wasn't at her house to see Lindsay. He was at her house to see his own mother. And Josh and his mother had a lot of catching up to do. She had abandoned him and his father when he was young, and so Josh's dad had raised him. And then when Josh was old enough, he had joined the military, and now he was about to deploy to the Middle East to go to war. But unexpectedly, Josh's father had died. And so Josh had come back to Illinois for the funeral. And it was at the funeral where he saw his mother. She was in attendance as well. And you know, even though he was upset with his mother for abandoning him, he felt like, you know what, I wanna reconnect with her. And so he'd gone over and he'd given her a hug. And his mother had been so touched that she had asked Josh to come by her house in Claremont, Illinois, where she lived with her boyfriend, because she really wanted some alone time to actually hear about Josh's life and kind of, you know, get back together again. And so, of course, Josh had said yes. And so here he was at this house in Claremont. Now, Josh had arrived at this house a little bit earlier, and he was surprised to discover that it was not just his mother and her boyfriend living there, but also his mother's boyfriend's son, whose name was Jackie, was also living there, along with his pregnant girlfriend, the evil witch, Lindsay Cassinger. But Josh didn't really mind that there was extra people. It was just maybe a little bit confusing that this was kind of a big roommate situation. But it seemed like Jackie and his girlfriend Lindsay were very nice people and they quickly went downstairs to the apartment in the basement and kind of just stayed out of the way so Josh and his mother could catch up. And so after Josh finished eating his wings, his mother came into the kitchen and the two of them chatted for hours. And then finally at about midnight that night, Josh decided to go to bed, so he said goodnight to his mom, he retreated to the bedroom, and he laid in bed. But he couldn't really sleep right away because he had a lot going on in his life. I mean, he had just lost his dad a couple of weeks ago, and then at the same time, he had reconnected with his estranged mother, and he's about to deploy to Iraq, to a war zone, and, you know, he felt ready for that, but at the same time, he was kind of apprehensive. You know, it's about to happen. You know, I hope I'll be able to do my job. And so with all these kind of intense thoughts swirling around his head, he just kind of laid there and didn't really expect to sleep anytime soon. But eventually, Josh did fall asleep, 
However, it felt like he had only been asleep for a couple of minutes when he was abruptly woken up by the sound of barking coming out from the kitchen. Jackie's dog was going crazy. And so Josh grabbed his phone and he checked the time and saw it was three in the morning. And so instead of going out there and dealing with this dog, he just thought, you know what, it's gonna stop eventually. And so Josh grabbed his pillow and he put it over his head and tried to muffle the sounds so he could fall back asleep. But it didn't work. The dog just kept on barking. And then when Josh took the pillow off his head and kind of sat up wondering what he should do about this dog situation, he heard the sound of a man's voice, a stranger's voice, saying, I bring you forth from the dark. And then after Josh heard this, he heard the sound of a woman screaming and it sounded like his mom. And so acting on instinct, Josh leapt from his bed, he ran out of the room and he goes into the kitchen and he sees the dog is jumping and barking and going mad and his mom is screaming and there's this guy grabbing her, kind of grappling with her, who's wearing black gloves and a ski mask and there's another guy next to him with the same getup. It's absolute chaos. But before Josh could run over and save his mother, suddenly his chest felt like it was on fire, and then he went blind, and his eyes had this burning pain in them, and then he couldn't breathe, and he was stumbling backwards, barely able to stand. Minutes later, Rick, who was one of the witches from the coven, bolted out of the front door of Lindsay's house where all this chaos was happening, and he just took off running across the street directly into a cornfield. And as he ran, he felt this throbbing pain in his leg, and he could feel blood pooling in his shoe. Rick ran until he couldn't run any farther, and then he collapsed onto the ground, and then he began thinking about what an absolute disaster it had been inside of the evil witch's house. Not only had they failed to break the hex cast by Lindsay, but also Rick was concerned that David, his partner, who was still at the house, was dead. And Rick, he began looking around wildly, hoping all those demons that were sent to help them from the spirit world, he was hoping they'd be nearby and they'd know what to do. But Rick looked around and there was no one. And so Rick thought for a second, oh my gosh, Lindsay's hex must be stronger than any of us realize. You know, we have to do something now. We have to end this before me and my family get killed too. And so Rick pulled out his phone and he called Irenia, the leader of the coven, to get her advice about what they should do next. But Irenia didn't respond to what Rick was saying the way he expected her to. Instead, she seemed very cold and almost enraged at what he was saying. And then before Rick could kind of figure out what was going on with Irenia, he heard off in the distance the sound of sirens making their way to the evil witch's house. Over the next few days, police detectives would speak to everyone inside of Irenia's coven, as well as everyone who knew both Irenia and Lindsay. And slowly but surely, the police would put together what actually happened inside of Lindsay, the evil witch's house, in the early morning hours of August 23rd, 2005. At about 3 a.m. on August 23rd, 2005, Rick and David pulled up onto Lindsay Street and they parked their car a little ways away from Lindsay's house. And then after parking, Rick and David donned their ski masks and their gloves. And then after looking at each other and nodding, they hopped out and began walking towards Lindsay's house. Their plan was to sneak in through one of Lindsay's windows and confront Lindsay the Evil Witch directly and break the hex by performing a sacred ritual. And then after this ritual was over, they had a second ritual they would need to perform that would send Lindsay's evil soul through the gates of hell. And to do that, they needed the help of the five demons that had been sent along by Irenia from the spirit world. Now, Rick and David felt like this was a great plan However, as soon as they got to Lindsay's house and David actually began trying to climb into one of the windows, everything fell apart. First, the dog began to bark inside of Lindsay's house and that alerted Josh's mother who came into the kitchen and sees the dog and sees David falling through the window and Rick who didn't really know what was happening inside the house, he just climbed through the window after David and when he stood up in the kitchen, he realized it was too late. They were totally caught. And so Rick, not really knowing what to do, he's seeing all this yelling and chaos happening. He looks over at David and he sees David grab something from his belt and he pulls it out. And it was the tool that Irenia had given them when they left her apartment to go carry out this sacred ritual. This tool was part of that sacred ritual. And it was a long, sharp knife. And what they were going to do is stab the evil witch, Lindsay Cassinger, to death with it. That was how they were going to break the hex. 
and then after they killed Lindsay, they were going to perform this weird ritual with her clothing that would send her soul through the gates of hell. Now, Rick did understand that this was the plan. They were going to murder Lindsay, but perhaps he didn't really know how serious David was about carrying it out, or the fact that David was not really a warlock as much as he was a violent criminal who had bragged to Irenia about previously murdering someone who had cast a separate hex. And so by killing this person, that was how David had broken the hex previously. Also, Rick may not have known that David had been instructed by Irenia to not let anything stand in their way to break this hex, to carry out this sacred ritual on Lindsay. And so Rick just watched as David raised the knife and began stabbing Josh's mother over and over again in the chest while screaming, I bring you forth from the dark. And it was at this point that Josh, the army private, who heard all this happening, came charging out in his underwear into the kitchen. And Rick watched as David went from stabbing Josh's mother to turning and immediately stabbing Josh directly in the chest. And Rick, at this point, he just jumped right in on it and pulled out his pepper spray and sprayed Josh in the eyes. And so that was why Josh felt the burning sensation and then went blind and couldn't breathe and fell to the ground. And so now it is absolutely chaos inside of this kitchen and the actual target of David and Rick's, Lindsay, the evil witch, she managed to run out of the house and run to a nearby neighbor's house to get help. Meanwhile, the evil witch's boyfriend, Jackie, he comes upstairs carrying a shotgun. And at this point, Josh is on the ground, clearly dying from the stab wound to his chest. His mother as well is struggling on the ground. And David is going totally nuts, saying all these strange things and whipping his knife around. And Rick is just totally panicking and doesn't know what to do. And so when Jackie ran at Rick with this shotgun, Rick pulled out his own knife and attempted to stab Jackie, but somehow missed Jackie and stabbed himself in the leg. And so that was why his leg was throbbing and bleeding because he had stabbed himself. And then after Rick had stabbed himself, Jackie just walked over and Spartan kicked Rick down the stairs into the basement. And then Jackie turned his attention from Rick to David, who was still just going nuts with this knife and being a total maniac. And Jackie just walked over to David and David, he sees the shotgun coming over to him and he tries to move the barrel out of the way, but then somehow only manages to point the gun directly at his own stomach. At which point Jackie just fired a slug directly into David's gut. And it was at this moment, as David is crumpling to the ground with his horrible stomach wound, that the neighbor that Lindsay, the evil witch, had gone to go get, had come to the house. They went inside and they found a scene of absolute carnage. And before the neighbor could even do anything, Rick, who had stabbed himself in the leg and been kicked down into the basement, had scrambled up the steps and just run right past all the bodies on the ground, past the neighbor who didn't even do anything, outside, and Rick just kept on running out into that cornfield. And so at this point, the neighbor didn't even try to figure out what happened. He just called 911. But it was already too late for Josh, the army private, who was only at this house to reconnect with his estranged mother before he deployed to Iraq. And here he was, dead on the ground from this totally bizarre attack. It would turn out Rick, David, and really the entire coven of witches that fell under Irenia had been totally duped. They all fully believed that Lindsay was in fact an evil witch who had cast this hex on Irenia, which was spreading to all the other members of the coven. But in reality, Irenia, the leader of this coven, she didn't believe there was a hex that had nothing to do with any of this. The whole coven thing was totally made up. She was just jealous that Lindsay was dating Jackie. Irenia had previously dated Jackie and they had broken up and Irenia still wanted to get back together, but Jackie didn't. And so now that Jackie was with Lindsay, Irenia just couldn't handle it. And so naturally, Irenia had constructed this whole thing about Lindsay being one of the dark witches in Claremont, Illinois, and she's cast this hex. And now you, my witches in this coven, you need to go and kill her. But of course, Lindsay did not end up getting killed. And instead, it was the totally innocent person, Josh, the army private, who had nothing to do with any of this, who got killed. In addition to Josh dying, David, the warlock from St. Louis, he died from the shotgun blast to his stomach. 
and then Josh's mother, who had been stabbed repeatedly by David, she would actually survive her attack. Irenia would ultimately be found guilty of first-degree murder, and she would be sentenced to 57 years in prison. Rick pleaded guilty to murder as well, and he was sentenced to 20 years, and a third member of the coven, who was not present for the attack, but who, after the fact, helped cover it up, they were sentenced to 32 years in prison. One of the most haunted places in the entire United Kingdom is this little nondescript farmhouse in rural Wales. In 1989, Bill and Liz Rich, who were newlyweds, moved into their dream home, this little farmhouse in Wales. And pretty much right away, terrifying things began happening to them. They began hearing these loud footsteps marching around their second floor, but as soon as they went up there, there would be nothing. And then 